What's up guys, Parker here. I have a very useful video today showing you how you can expand record columns dynamically in Power Query. I say dynamically because if you've ever expanded a record in Power Query before, you probably went through the UI, which hard codes column names. So this video is gonna teach you how you can uh, make it dynamic so you're not specifying column names to expand. Instead, it will expand all of the columns that are returned in your data. So in this example, I'm using a sample API call that uh, returns some null values and some record values. So you see out of the 11 records here, three have uh, values in them. So uh, if you have expanded columns in the past, you probably went through the UI by clicking these little um, two arrows and it specifies all of the columns that you have available. So we can click OK and this is how it normally expands. So you'll get all of the different columns. You see that there are null values for those uh, records that had null records, but the, uh, but the rows that did have records now have uh, these values in them. There isn't much data in here. They all just say false, uh, but that's okay. This is just to show the idea of expanding records. Uh, but as you see, the code that it writes for you specifies the column names that are meant to be expanded. So these five columns are what, uh, are, are what should be expanded, and these are the names of the five columns once you're done expanding. So this isn't very flexible. Uh, what, if your uh, API or data source changes, uh, if the schema changes, then you're gonna have problems, things are gonna break if even one letter is off from these values. So I'm gonna walk you through how you can make this dynamic so that these names never have to be hard-coded. So we can get rid of this step and we'll kind of skip to the end here. I'll show you the final solution. So uh, this is the final code that needs to be written. So it's using the same table.expandRecord uh, function, which was what was shown uh, when we went through the UI. It's specifying our table, specifying the column that we're expanding, and then we get into the dynamic portion where this code right here is selecting just the names of the columns that should be expanded. Um, and finally, we're setting the name of our return columns to the exact same thing. So we're gonna walk through each step of this. Uh, if this looks like a lot, don't worry, we're gonna go through each individual part. Um, so also, I have, a couple of, um, I have a couple of steps here to keep certain rows because we're gonna have to debug what to do uh, when we have null values um, because by default, it is a little bit tricky. So first of all, we are going to um, limit this down to where we just have a, a uh, one record returned. So if I keep the first six and then the last one, you can see I'm just limiting, uh, limiting my data set down to where there is a record to expand. So you see that we can expand based on those five columns, but instead if we had just a null value, then there would be nothing to expand. Um, so we're gonna switch that back just for our testing period. So now we have a record to expand. Let's go ahead and expand the old way. Get some kind of custom code written for us. So we, we have our start here, we're expanding this record column, um, but instead of specifying these names, we're going to get rid of that and start from scratch. And we can actually um, just test real quick, write a couple of functions. The first one we are going to do is we're gonna write the table.column function to specify our column. So using our previous table, kept first rows and our column name, which was I think called column to expand. This gives us the list of values. Oh, sorry, kept last rows. So this basically just gives us our one record value in list format, which is necessary because we are then going to type in table.fromRecords so that we can create a table out of the list of records. And you see now we have a table that is basically the expanded version, but we just wanna get the uh, column names from this table. So to do that, we just need to type in table dot column names from this uh, return table right here 
and we get the column names in the list format. So using this right here, we can go ahead and just copy. I'm gonna get rid of this step because we don't actually need it. We can expand our, um, our columns through the UI and instead of hard coding in the names, we can go ahead and paste that in and on the bottom part as well. And go ahead and click enter. And you see we have the same, um, the same output here. So we have dynamic column names at this point because it's just getting those column names from the table itself. And just to give you kind of a, a run through of what it's doing, it's specifying the column that we're looking at, which was the column to expand. It's getting, uh, it's creating a table out of the record value for that column and then just getting the column names. So those three functions um, uh, in succession make, it a make you able to get the column names from that record column. So that's pretty cool. Um, I do wanna show you what happens when you introduce a null value though. Um, so let's say we kept uh, the last three rows. So we have a null, null, and a record. Now when we try to expand, we get a problem saying it can't expand a null value. So that's kind of unfortunate. So we're gonna add a little bit more code to handle these, uh, these nulls right here. So we can add one more function to chain in the middle of this. It's going to be list.select. And if you remember, table.column returned a list to us. So we are going to select um, just certain records that meet our criteria. So once we have list.select typed out, we are going to skip to the end here after these first parentheses, and we only want to select values that aren't null or blank. Um, so we can put comma, each underscore does not equal null, and underscore does not equal basically an empty string. And let's make sure we have all of the necessary um, parentheses here. I think we need one more. So now we're just filtering down our result set to items that don't have nulls. And I will go ahead and just for the sake, uh, just for the sake, I'm going to just show you what this does. So I'm just gonna throw in you know, a little dummy step here and get rid of the code. So as you can see, let me actually get rid of this as well. This is our final output for the column names. But if we just want to select the items that aren't null or blank, you see we went from three rows to just one row with that one record. So that's exactly what we want to do here. And then finally, we can go ahead and click, all right, let's save, uh, let's copy this one more time, throw it at the bottom with one extra parenthesis and there you go so it's still firing just like it should with our null rows so we go from three rows with two nulls to our fully expanded uh, data set with three rows so now that we've successfully handled the null situation i want to show you what happens when you have all nulls which is still pretty cool um, so imagine i uh, whittled this down to just five records so every record is null and go ahead and get rid of kept last rows. So really, I just have five rows that all have null values. When I try to expand that, you see now it just has nothing to expand to, which is perfect. So in case you uh, return data from an API that actually has no data, has no record columns, everything's null, then it's just gonna fail gracefully and allow you just to not return any data. So it's not gonna miss any steps or uh, have to stop execution because it's hitting an error. It's just going to uh, basically return no data. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my kept first rows just so we can see the final product. So we go from this step with all of our uh, values and only three records to a fully expanded, uh, dynamically expanded version of our table. So I hope you see the use of uh, this video and this method. This is, uh, although it's a little bit lengthy to type out, it's way better than hard coding in the column names. So now that you've made it dynamic, you can make any changes to your data source that you need and Power BI will pick it up for you. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.